Hi, today is Revelation, a Bible study, and we are on day 12. Let's start with our blessing. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. We're going to start the seven church um, letters. So go to my website, uh, not my website, but my Facebook page and pull up the paperwork if you're using it. And let's get started. Each of the letters to these different churches contain a similar format. They all start with an address to that particular congregation. Jesus says the name. Then there's an introduction of Jesus and he uses a different introduction for himself to every church. Then he makes a statement regarding the condition of the church and then a verdict regarding their condition. Then he gives a command to the individual church and a command to the individual Christians. And then finally, a promise of a reward. So we start with the church of Ephesus and we're gonna get some background on it. This was the first church Jesus had John write to. The background on Ephesus is that it was the apostolic church. It was from AD 40 to AD 150. It was actually founded by apostles. Apostles, not of Christ, but of John the Baptist, which we'll read in a moment. The name Ephesus means desirable. That's what it actually means. The original charter members of the church were a handful of the disciples of John the Baptist. Aquila and Priscilla, we talked about them in the one Bible study. That's a hubby and wife duo. They were huge workers in this church. They were the very first Christians of this uh, church to start the heavy part of the work, and they were heavy hitters for the Lord. Paul, the apostle, spent a lot of time at the church of Ephesus. He was there in AD 56. He was there for about three years, I believe. Ephesus was John, the apostle's hometown. So it's kind of really cool that Jesus has him right to Ephesus first. And then this is where John is permitted to live once he's removed or released from the island of Patmos. He dies in Ephesus, according to church writers, an old man. He's one of the only apostles to die uh, a nonviolent death. John wrote the gospel named John while he lived in Ephesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus, lived in Ephesus after Christ was crucified until the day she died. Timothy, remember Timothy? He was one of Paul's um, young ones that he raised up in the faith. Timothy actually died in Ephesus from mob violence. Are you ready for this? Because he opposed the festivals of their goddess, Diana. And they were so fervent in their worship of Diana that they murdered Timothy in a mob uh, an act of mob violence. Ephesus was a seaport. It was about uh, east, almost directly east of Athens, Greece. And it had about 500,000 in its heyday, uh, 500,000 in its population. It was a political capital, capital of the Roman province of Asia. And finally, I repeat, it was famous for the worship of the goddess Diana or Artemis, as she was also called which was also one of the ancient world's seven wonders of the world. The temple of Diana was apparently breathtaking. So we're going to start with Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. All right, so it's unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. We talked about this yesterday, that there's different uh, dialogue in the Bible community, whether this is an actual angel, or if it means the pastor of the church, or if it's the climate of the church. It really doesn't matter. Whatever the Lord meant in his, in his entirety, all the things that we're going to read pertain to the church of Ephesus. There was a huge amount of persecution for the believers in Jesus in that part of the world in Rome, in the beginning of the church age. The pagan religions were horrific uh, to the Jewish people that have received Jesus, as were the Jews that were non-believers in Christ. But the church of Ephesus was determined to be tireless in their efforts to maintain doctrinal purity and right living in this atheistic atmosphere. Jesus depicted himself by saying, he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, because he was saying to these people, I know you're pioneers of the faith. 
He knew that they fought against the awful persecution of Christians, and he knew their lives were not easy. And Christ wanted them to know that he held them in his very own right hand. Remember what we talked about the right hand? It's the hand of power and authority and safety. This was meant as a comfort to these people, a sense of security. Jesus uses the word walketh here, and the word walk means that Christ took great care watching over these faithful servants. He literally walked in their midst. But it also doubles in meaning that Jesus is central to the church, and they had to remember that he was their first love, which is going to be important when we hear about some of the things he admonishes them for. The word holds, where Christ's hand holds, it's from an ancient Greek word, kraton, K-R-A-T-E-I-N, and it basically means Jesus has complete hold. Jesus holds this church securely. They are his. They don't belong to the church leaders or any earthly plane. They are Jesus Christ. Let's go on to Revelation 2, verses 2 to 4. Jesus says, I know your works. I know your labor, your patience, and how you cannot bear them which are evil. And you have tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have borne and have had patience, and for my name's sake you have labored and have not fainted. Wow. So far, this church sounds like it's got its collective spiritual butt all together. Jesus knew their works, he knew their faithful, faithfulness, he knew their patience, and they cannot bear those who are evil. The Ephesian church pursued doctrinal purity. I said that just a few moments ago. Paul himself warned the Ephesian church in Acts chapter 20, verses 29 to 31 with these words. I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. This church took the apostle Paul's warnings seriously. We should too. We needed to test and try those that claim to be messengers from God, especially those that are in these big fancy pulpits. Because you got to remember one thing, the greater the evil, the more deceptive its cloak. Patience in the Greek comes from the Greek word hupomene. It means steadfast endurance. In this sense, the church in Ephesus was rock solid. So when the Lord says, I know your patience, he's saying, I know you're rock solid. Listen, the Ephesian church continued doing these things without becoming weary. They were an absolutely amazing church since they were in such an idol-infested country. Remember the story of the people who shouted, Great is Diana of the Ephesians for so many hours that the whole city was brought to a grinding halt? So far, it sounds like this church isn't doing anything wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow. May the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine on you and give you his precious shalom.